Hello, Mount Holyoke Psychology 201 students. Welcome to your pre-work tutorial for your one sample t-test lab. This is your lab instructor, Natasha. Today, I will show you how to run a one sample t-test using SPSS. So I was interested in an article in the Mount Holyoke News published in the fall called Dining Commons Experiences, a Dish Appearing Act. So it stated that over $15,000 worth of dishes had reportedly been taken from the Mount Holyoke Dining Commons that semester. I was pretty surprised by that number. So in this example, I'm going to pretend that I pulled one of my wonderful lab sections and wanted to find out how many dishes they had from the Dining Commons in their room. Okay, so here's a very small data set with um, 15 students and this variable is showing how many dishes they reported having in their room. So what do we need to do to figure out whether um, the students in this lab have significantly more or less uh, dishes than the campus average of five dishes? What do we need to do to figure this out? Spoiler alert, given that this is the one sample t-test, tutorial, it's a one sample t-test. So we go up to the analyze, down to descriptive statistics, I'm sorry, down to compare means, and we look for the one sample t-test. Here it is. Up pops this window, and you'll see this test variables box. It gives us the option of moving any of the variables we're interested in testing. In this case, it's going to be dishes. So we're gonna move that into this box. This test value box is asking for the population mean that we're comparing our sample mean here to. So in this case, we said that the Mount Holyoke average student, um, or sorry, average that the Mount Holyoke students have, the population average, is five dishes. So we're going to type in a five here. So what this does when we run this, it's going to compare the average number of dishes from our sample to the population average of five. So let's hit OK. Up comes our output window. This first table gives us the one sample statistics. It tells us that 15 people answered this question. It gives us our mean number of dishes of our sample. So in this case, it's 2.33 with a standard deviation of 2.87. And here's the standard error of the mean. The second table is the one sample test. It shows us that the test value that we're comparing the 2.33 to is 5. Then in below, this is our t value, minus 3.598. It gives us the degrees of freedom, which are 14. The sig two-tailed column tells us our p value. In this case, it's 0 0.003. This column shows us the mean difference between the two averages. And then we have our confidence interval information over here. So how do we interpret this? The first thing we want to do is to look in the sig two-tailed column to see the p value. In this case, if we assumed an alpha level of 0 0.05, we'll see that 0 0.003 is below 0 0.05. So we're able to say that this test is significant. Now, how do we know whether the people in this lab have significantly more or less? It's pretty obvious by looking at the means that 2.33 is less than 5. You can also look at the mean difference and see that this is a uh, negative value here. And you're able then to say that the students in this lab have significantly fewer dishes in their room than the average um, population average of Mount Holyoke students of five dishes. So that's really how simple it all is. Um, it's a pretty simple analysis to use in SPSS. So um, until next time, remember, don't be mean, be above average. <laughs>